the way we, we met is one of the funniest and most amazing stories for me. Uh, we, we started off on a project that we were supposed to do together. We came over to you for your architectural advice. And then that project stopped and uh, we continued being friends. We found a lot of uh, mutual things between us. And honestly, I love to have friends who are non-Kuwaitis that decided to move to Kuwait and, and establish their lives here. So what was life before you came to Kuwait? How did you grow up? I grew up in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, I'm coming from that country, but actually I was born in a country that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, that country is Yugoslavia. And uh, I will say it disappeared in the in beginning of 90s, you know, when uh, very hard and difficult war. Yes. You've, you've talked to me about that yes, work. Can, yes, you, can yes. you explain? Uh, yes, but before I explain that part, I would like to mention just a bit of uh, my life in Yugoslavia yeah. that actually uh, helped me to move through all the difficult time. And uh, all values that I have from, uh, that, that I still have in my life are values that are uh, deeply embedded in me uh, during my childhood. Okay. That was childhood in uh, that country with a lot, lot of positive energy, with a lot of uh, uh, with a lot of love that we shared between each other. My childhood also there was the Olympic Games uh, that was part of my childhood uh, in Sarajevo in Yugoslavia, and uh, all all that environment was uh, amazing, uh, full of happiness, and we were preparing to show to the world how we are good hosts. Mm -hmm. And yes, and Olympic Games finished. Uh, future was so bright in front of us. We all thought that uh, uh, nothing bad can happen. But just a few years after, war started. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, war started like every other war. Uh, started with a lot of uh, political issues that I would like to uh, set aside. And I can only say how do we feel. What was your experience during yeah. that war? As I understood, you spoke about your father being in the army and had to leave and left you with your sister yeah. and your mother, three women, yeah. in a house alone with the unknown. And, and you read about war stories and how they are terrible for women more than anyone else. Mm -hmm. And there you are having to um, survive with nothing but you and a mother and a sister. How was that? Well, war started, uh, surprisingly, I would say. And uh, first, it was first year of us adjusting on everything, what is going on around us. And uh, I remember myself thinking at that time, OK, we can handle this. It's not so scary. We just need to uh, stay away from uh, grenades and uh, snipers, keep our life safe in a shelter, which was still possible. So that's it. I was 13 years old and uh, uh, I had the friends, so everything was much easier. Uh, but one year after war started, uh, war, I would say, took a turn and we suddenly found ourselves on the uh, other side, on the wrong side. Mm -hmm. And my father, he, he was on the other side. How did it that was, happen? It is, as I said, it is political situation and war in uh, Bosnia was between th three sides. So we suddenly find ourselves on a it's same apartment when we were living, just we were kind of on the wrong side. Wrong side. Yeah. How did you manage as three women having yeah. to work together? Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming with other women who also had to be in that situation. Yeah, uh, we had uh, even between other amongst other women, we had uh, uh, other different story of it because uh, only our father, my father, my mother, husband, he was on the other side. Other husbands were there. So it wasn't the same. Uh, and uh, we found ourselves as a prisoners in our apartment, which is just 60 square meter and uh, balcony. This is, and we couldn't go out. We had our neighbors definitely who could visit us. And he stay, they stayed with us. I mean, they were helping us a lot. At the end of the day, we will be stay alone. Is, was that 
period very hard on you because I, I see there are some yeah. emotions coming up and yeah. and you know after I heard your story and we were talking mm-hmm. about it and honestly I had to reflect on myself and the challenges that I face on a daily basis and just realize how small they are in comparison mm-hmm. to what other women are facing in other areas of the world maybe we are not aware of them and this is a beautiful time for you to explain how how it affected you on a personal level as a woman because it does take a lot from you i would say for me my sister and mother we were lucky and i'm saying from perspective that we were uh, we survived our father survived our, uh, and we were not raped so my experience is much different From women who are raped. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, but still, even 30 years after, <laughs> emotions are still hard. I mean, I'm sure just being yes. in that environment yes, and yes, knowing yes, yes. who the, those yes. other women were. Yes. Is yes. 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 Hard. Uh, uh, it was very hard, and uh, but I would say that uh, we were lucky. I would say that we were lucky. At that time, I mean, uh, I realize how. Uh, difficult situation was after it was finished many years after when i think now about it i know how difficult it was at that time as i said it were it was only three of us my sister he she's older than me three years and my mother and actually we never spoke about what if something happened so after you came out of this war experience whatever happened just stayed with the war no one mentioned it no one brought it up because each one I'm, I'm assuming was happy that they made it out alive and not raped at that point but at the same time it was still living inside of you yeah and when you told me that when we were discussing i mean uh, last seven days i am living again those stories from uh, that was 1993 that's long time ago what was the main challenge for you after coming out of the war to resume your life, um, to build yourself afterwards? I would like to uh, tell you that I know now, when I'm mother, how it was difficult. Uh, all this time, my mother took, my mother took uh, that heaviness of situation and she took all the fears from us. Uh, I was never afraid during that time. Me and my sister, we were not afraid that much. We never had a sleepless night. Uh, my opinion was that my mother knows something that we don't know, and she knew that we will be safe. But when everything is finished, we realized that actually, no, she didn't know anything. She was just brave in front of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, she didn't know what will happen next and what n- other day will bring, but she didn't want to show. Yeah. And now when I am mother, I realize how strong actually she was at that time. Yeah. I mean, bec- uh, I am emotional now thinking about that only because, mo- mainly because of her. You put yourself in that yes. position with in your daughter, yes. if, if it was you. Yes. 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 Amazing. And so after that, you established your career in yes. architecture in Bosnia. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. After that, we moved from city and everything war is finished and we try to continue where we were before. But um, I never left the feeling that we lost so much because uh, four years of war showed me just how it was uh, pointless and how every war is actually nonsense. There is no winner in any war. Uh, so at the end, uh, when it's finished, we try to uh, take all the energy and go ahead. Uh, uh, I try to uh, uh, bring back my uh, my uh, years that are lost. Mm. How are they not lost? You've learned so at, much. At that time, I thought it's lost. Yeah. At that time, I thought like soon after the war, because uh, first travel uh, in Italy showed me where is the world and. Uh, where, Bos- where my life is in Bosnia. So this was like very shocking for me. And uh, uh, because war is very hard experience, everyone, uh, it doesn't go that easy from, easy from, uh, from people. 
I mean, it is in us. The, that energy I still can feel in Bosnia. It shapes your life. It shapes your life, and that energy still is in Bosnia. Still, when I go there, I feel the same. So I went, uh, I tried to continue my life as a normal, uh, uh, I studied architecture, uh, I am very happy that I chose that uh, profession and I started to work there for some other companies, beginning 2010 I uh, started my own company in Boston. Mm -hmm. And then architecture obviously was, let's say, an expression for you and then uh, I remember you told me the story about the friendship park yeah. and how that came about and, and yes. it's a beautiful yeah. story. I would love you for yeah. you to say it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so that was uh, when I started the company, that was a world crisis. Same as this now, <laughs> where we are now. It was a world crisis and uh, we didn't have enough projects. I mean, I have a partner, uh, my very good friend Ariana. We were together in a, in a business. And uh, we have few house, small houses, and it was just barely enough uh, for uh, salaries. And then uh, she told me there is a one park, uh, there is an idea from Azerbaijan embassy to um, finance one park in Sarajevo Park of Friendship, but they need to have a statue of a hero from a last war in Bosnia and one statue from the hero on the last uh, genocide in Azerbaijan happened, that happened also in, during the 90s. So, and Ariana was like, we are not getting it because who is a hero? And she left on vacation. Uh, I knew that we need that project. So I was like, I, I, we need to get it. So I started thinking about who can be that hero. Who, uh, in Bosnia, we, uh, uh, there is no one person who, because we are, um, like it should be three, uh, uh, three people because we, our country is still kind of divided and you cannot find one person who will represent our country. So uh, I was thinking who one person can be. And uh, one night I just woke up, <laughs> it just came to me, yeah. it is a mother. And I just start to write. I, uh, yeah. Do you realize yeah. what that means to you now, now that you're a mother, at that time yes. it was a yeah. representation, but today you, you are living it. Yes. And probably you constructing a mm -hmm. statue of yeah. that hero. Yes. At that time, I'm assuming a lot of mothers did relate to it and, yes, yes, and yes. are feeling yes. what you're feeling yeah. now because the true loss in a war mm -hmm. is the mother who sends her kids off to basically die. Yeah, mother is actually a uh, mother and wife and woman is the one who is the core of uh, every family, who is the core of the life. Uh, and um, this is what that park is actually representing. Uh, next to that statue of, uh, of a mother is a fountain which shows, uh, which is like a floating, it's a going from the earth, floating, and then again disappearing in the earth, and again that same cycle. So this is what we want to uh, show that without mother there is no life. Yes. Uh, and this is also mother from how uh, strong she should be uh, even in any time of our life, but especially in time of war, which is the biggest challenge for her. She has to give her son to go to her. She needs to be strong in front of her daughter and she needs to send her husband to that war. And she, she should be strong enough not to show that she is afraid. Mm -hmm. So this is what uh, Park represented. I would like if you will visit that park. <laughs> I really hope I can Sarajevo. because I'm sure it's, yeah, it's, it's as beautiful Sarajevo. as you explain yeah. it to be. Yeah. Um, it's it's interesting that you started your business with a woman. Yeah. yeah. Was that easy to do? And were there challenges there uh, when you were uh, working together, when you are um, probably working with your teams of women? Do you feel yeah. that women were empowering each other? Definitely, we empower each other. But uh, I'm that kind of woman, if I can say that I am not afraid working in a man's world and being in the men's world. Uh, 
uh, and my uh, job is and my all what I'm working is with the men. So uh, at, the, at this point, I don't feel that anymore. Uh, How is it working with men? And I know you, you've yeah. mentioned it a few yeah. times that even uh, here, uh, some of them are uneducated. They're workers. You're on site. And it reaches a point where even the language is a barrier and yes, you're, yes. you're doing sign language because, yes. because you need him to understand you. And in the yes. beginning, they're obviously looking at you as, who's this crazy woman? <laughs> yes, yes. But then exactly. they realize yes. that, that, no, she is the site manager and we're going to have to communicate with her. And how did you, let's say, assert yourself in those situations for them to actually comply with what you're saying? Honestly, in Kuwait, Kuwait is much easier to work as a woman than uh, in Europe. How so? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, here, men has uh, so much more respect towards women than in Europe. Uh, this is my. Uh, I am at constructions. My work. I am architect, but uh, last ten years I'm working at at construction site, and my always my team is uh, uh, their men. I mean there. So, uh, male, I mean, and uh, here, I, be I believe uh, they are raised to respect more than they are in Europe. This is this is what I feel. This is my personal feeling. And I was working in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. I was working one short period in Italy. This is my experience. It was easier. It was easier uh, in Bosnia. Uh, I had to uh, work three times harder <laughs> to show <laughs> that but here uh, they will hear me after 15 minutes they will <laughs> start to uh, uh, understand me and uh, uh, look at me like equal but do this you, is personal do you feel this is the same what working with women in Kuwait versus in Europe yes I'm uh, Actually, uh, why I stopped the uh, file, I don't work a lot with the women here. Maybe in our business, uh, maybe I'm meeting two, three only here, two, three, five. I don't know, but it's a less number than uh, it was in Bosnia, definitely. But I have to say, we are at construction site. It's very hard to find. Working in office with other, yes. let's say, fresh graduates or interns or, you know, women who are aspiring mm -hmm. to be to be architects and and so forth do you find that some of them are not cooperative is there a sense of competition when they come in um, or are they seeing that you being mm -hmm. the 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 boss is something that empowers them and and they strive to be something similar to you uh, there is uh, both actually there is both in in that sense there is there are both thing uh, uh, women that is easy to cooperate because they just uh, accept you as you are but there are some action that will uh, that will take some time but eventually it will come after some time it will uh, we will become a good team um, I want to just go back to your work in Bosnia at one point, you said, I can't do this. You packed your bags. Yes. You gave your, your firm to your partner and yes. you just mm -hmm. took the first job, which was in Kuwait. Yes. Exactly. And you came here, you know, no one. Yes. yes. Why? Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> for me, that's crazy. <laughs> but uh, actually, that, that uh, inside me, like, like uh, I had all the time, I lost something. And I was always, uh, or that's just me, I want to change. Maybe it was enough for me because company was doing good and we signed a good project. At that time, uh, actually, some uh, Kuwaiti investors came in Bosnia and uh, we made a, a good project for them. Uh, actually, we were in the middle of project when uh, I got an email from my mother again. <laughs> uh, if She sent me like, if I knew, uh, knew any friend who is architect, maybe they can apply some company in Kuwait is looking for an architect and I, I applied because I, I felt inside me I need to change. I, I need to change something. I, it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. Later on I will understand why. <laughs> and then you left everything, you came here yes. and you knew obviously no one. No one. How did no the, one. the, let's say, social building start? Mm -hmm. First thing that I had to learn here 
is to slow down. This is the first thing. Uh, in Bosnia, I was working uh, hard for 12 hours a day without, I would say, without break. That That is the uh, way uh, how we were there, how my life was there. When I came here, sure, there are deadlines, there is, but it's not uh, under that pressure like it was back, back home. Uh, and people here are more relaxed, more, uh, now I would say why. Uh, I feel like uh, they have more respect to themselves, I would say, in a way, and they are, they have very good connection with themselves. Then uh, when you are working 12 hours a day, you are losing that connection with yourself. Do you still feel that today? Here, yes. Yes? Yes. Yes, yes, that's very interesting. Yes, yes, I found myself when I came here. I seriously, I, I had the time uh, to think about myself, what really I want from my life. That was the first time, uh, maybe because I was alone at the beginning with our small friends, and uh, maybe that was the reason. But I uh, now I think this is the environment here. Uh, life is as it should be, not too fast. Life is uh, slow and give you time to think. This is what I love in Kuwait. Do you find um, the, the work environment here different than in Bosnia? One to one with your colleagues. Is there a difference between the, the culture? Yes, culture is different. Culture is different. Um, okay, we will finish job in Bosnia and in Kuwait. Job will be done. But uh, Bosna, Bosnian and I would say Balkan region, uh, we are very energetic. I mean, it's uh, normal to raise the voice and <laughs> here, no. Yeah. Here is a calm atmosphere and still job will be done. I, yeah. And when I mention Balkan, I have to say that mean blood and honey. <laughs> but here is really smooth and uh, it's, I, I feel it, it's easier. I feel uh, it's much easier to work here. Is it the same also when you're working with um, Kuwaiti women who come to you mm -hmm. to see um, their projects come to life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, did you have to adapt based on the culture here? Because I'm sure it, the housing, you work on houses yes. mostly. Yes. They're different. Yes. The, the needs are different. Did you find that there was like a very steep learning curve for you to understand why our houses are bigger or why we need so many rooms or how the family dynamic is was it easier to work with the women who mm -hmm. came to ask for their home or sometimes just the husband is there and asking you to do something and then you realize that you need to sit with the wife to understand eventually we always need to sit with the wife wife is the uh, wife is the core of the home and yes we are designing mainly villas wife will always give us the best um, what they really need, what they actually need in the house, uh, and this is the uh, what we what we need to uh, have good conversation. And we always have a good conversation. I always have a good conversation in a, with a with a woman and with, of course, with our male male clients. Sure, but um, what is uh, the, my main goal is a trust. We, uh, I think it's extremely important what we are working on. It's uh, we are designing home for a family. And uh, this is most important part to understand very well. Uh, and uh, we will understand it through uh, uh, women, how women will explain and how that family actually live. And other question was, uh, is it, it was, is it hard? It was hard. Yes, it was extremely hard. Uh, to uh, to um, to learn all the traditions and the lifestyle here in Kuwait uh, is absolutely different from uh, what how we live in uh, in uh, Bosnia. For me now it's very easy because I'm here already eight years. But at the beginning it took me one year to understand all the all the details and all. And again now I I uh, I'm familiar and uh, I understand completely why why house, uh, houses are so big. And, uh, all starting with the uh, Arabic tradition that uh, guest has the highest priority. 
Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> but isn't it wonderful? <laughs> yeah, usually ground floor, all this inviting area is for guests. And still you are cherished. That's, I, I, this is amazing. So that was on a professional um, side. But uh, how does it feel? I know you met your husband here. Your husband is Kuwaiti. Um, how was integrating into the Kuwaiti family, the women? I would say very easy for me because his family is that way that they are they welcomed me from the day one they accepted as I am this is what I'm extremely grateful <laughs> uh, Muhammad have a, he has a two sisters brother well, mother and father and they all accepted him like I am from Kuwait and uh, if ever I made any mistake I don't know. They never said. <laughs> it was there like some sort of training into the culture? Because it is definitely def very different from Bosnia. Yes, yes. It's very, very different from Bosnia. Um, uh, what was very interesting when I uh, met my mother-in-law, uh, we were sitting in uh, Divania and I went there to like meet her and everything and we stayed for four hours sitting and talking and from that moment I really felt that uh, I'm in family <laughs> uh, and then later when my parents came even my father was crying <laughs> when he met them uh, when he realized how they accepted me in a good way within that setting mm -hmm. do you feel that um, they added value to you um, as I'm assuming they are strong women. You, yes. You've mentioned that yes. more than once. Yes. Yes. Um, did you learn things from them that you apply to yourself? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I will say more about Muhammad's mother because uh, she is the one who is in a very profound way uh, giving you lead, giving you things uh, showing you the way how uh, culture and tradition is here and what might be good for you if you want. This is how the way how she approached me and uh, this is how I got the best from her. I mean this is how I got the best from this culture. This is uh, what made me, for example, Fridays for me were unknown like every fr Friday you will go to see your family and you will spend that day uh, in Europe we don't have it this is very strange something that is here so common and familiar that thing is uh, absolutely strange like how I can decide that all my Fridays till the end of my life will be this way now I feel I I'm not complete if I don't go there for a Friday that Friday is very important to see all all of them to mix with the kids to uh, to get that energy from them no matter uh, how i was feeling that morning when i woke up i know i will uh, leave that house with a smile so what what else you can get <laughs> isn't it wonderful and then socially mm -hmm. did you feel accepted welcomed into the community the the kuwaiti women the um, let's say other interact making friends here no I didn't have I know you knew no one coming into yes, Kuwait yes. but did you have an impression yes, of the yes, country yes, yes, and did true. you have an impression of the women here yes uh, general impression uh, I will say in from Bosnia but probably in Europe is that uh, Arabs in general are closed is, are not that open, not welcoming. This is general impression. This is what I thought that I will find here. But it's completely opposite. It's absolutely opposite from that. And uh, first, I remember first year when I went uh, to Bosnia, for my first vacation was only talking uh, about how people you don't know how there is wonderful. Like uh, I, I wanted and uh, to explain everyone that you are uh, you are making mistake about these uh, uh, stories that are not 
actually doesn't have any connection with the real world there. Let's say the, the, the general feeling or the general outlook of women here to be similar to the women in Bosnia. Do they, um, let's say, do they reach their full potential? This is where we, I have to say that we are uh, very different. I would like to say uh, the basic of life which is in front the base, life base, uh, for a woman in Bosnia is absolutely different from the base there is a woman in Kuwait. She, I would say just because she is born here in this environment, she is given m much more than a woman in Bosnia. She has so many opportunities which uh, is around her much more than we have there. Um, and I wish to see that uh, they are taking them uh, in a better way and they are more sure of all opportunities given in, uh, just because they are born here. That's from a cultural point of view or from a professional point of view? Actually both. Uh, uh, you have strong, very strong base, which is your family. Uh, this, what I see, can give you give you basic security. After that, you have uh, your country which take care about you. Uh, you don't need to think about. I'm talking about basic things. You don't have to think about your education. You don't have to think about healthcare. Uh, these are the these are the uh, elements that uh, build uh, your free life. You take them, uh, you take them and build more, add, add to it. I mean, it's much easier than when you uh, are born in a, in a place from where I'm coming. It's an absolute, I would say, mess. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, in certain point, I, I, it's not that I don't know, I couldn't see my future. I don't know if to, tomorrow will be. Will be. So uh, this is completely different, and not only during the war. I mean, after the war, we still didn't recover, which Kuwait, even you had the war also, but you recovered fast. Uh, environment here is more positive, much more positive than there. Mm -hmm. Knowing what you know today and with all your experience, how are you today empowering other women? The only way how I can empower is through my work. This is the um, the only way that I am interacting with uh, with the others and only uh, to show them way how I am living. I don't know the other way how to do. So you are a mother today, yes. and if you would agree, with the biggest investment you have are these two kids yes, sure. you have and, <laughs> and how you're yes. you're raising them and how you're bringing them up. What would you tell your daughter? What do you want to tell her? What, what advice do you want to give her? To be sure who is she. Uh, to uh, understand that life, life is her biggest teacher. I would like to help her to build her uh, good connection with the God, because this is a major thing in everyone's life. Uh, I would love if she will love herself and take care about herself this is the best way how she will care for everyone else. I mean, this is most important that I would love for my daughter. Don't let uh, life take you, you take your life. I mean, don't, uh, don't let others shape your life. Uh, I, I mentioned how hard was life uh, during the war, but I realize it now. What, what happened is my mother made our micro world and this is what we always can do for ourselves this is what i did when i came here in kuwait i mean i came in the place i don't know i know nothing i have not and I, but i decided okay this is now me and i want to enjoy it and uh, uh day by day was better and better so don't be afraid uh take your life in your hand I mean, this is a 
this is what I would say. Did you have someone that you looked up to growing up, uh, be it in your hometown or even internationally? Was there someone you aspired to be? Growing there up? are two women. One is sure my mother. Uh, the other one uh, is Emira. Emira is, um, I would say she's my best friend, but she is age of my mother. <laughs> and we spent so much to, uh, time together uh, back when I was in Bosnia, even now, of course. Uh, when I sent her message, she always said, I just thought about you. Uh, we, have, we have that connection. And uh, she is one of those two women who inspired me and she still inspires me and when I'm in some when I don't know what to do for example I will always okay what she would do. Emira also had her story uh, before war during the war after war and uh, it's amazing uh, so she is my inspiration I see. Until this day she's uh, yes, still your inspiration. Yes, yes. yes until this day yes. That's beautiful. <laughs> We meet for coffee a lot of the time. And every time we do meet, each one of us is reading a book and we have a discussion about it. What are you reading today? I am actually rereading a book that I read before. It's a discussion with God, uh, Neil Donald Bosch. How are you liking it? Yeah, uh, it it's been on in my library for a while now. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. haven't even started. I read it before, but now I'm reading again because this is, I, I believe every time when you are reading that you can find something very useful. It will open your eyes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm reading few books, always few, <laughs> few books <laughs> in a time. Uh, I'm reading also Tadawan, the architecture. But uh, he is amazing artic architect, uh, Japanese architect, who uh, in he, each of his projects, he has some spiritual way. So he's simply amazing. And he built only in concrete. Someone would say concrete is uh, like without soul, but no, he gives even soul to concrete. So that's yeah. And I, I always love our conversations. We, you, are one of the fascinating people I sit with, and the conversations we have always end up making me grow. And this is what I love about conversations we have as women together, because every time we we just have a coffee, I come up either contemplating what's going on in my life or realizing I am overthinking a problem and I need to just step back and reevaluate. And I just want to thank you for being here today because as usual, I have learned a lot today. Thank you so much for inviting me here and thank you so much for this words. Actually, this is what I feel always uh, when we end our coffee. I, I'm always full, full of positive energy and always thinking about how lucky I am. <laughs> Feelings are mutual. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in and we will be seeing you soon. The funny word uh, and used so much here and I'm so sorry that we are doing so much here in Wasta. Ha, 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 ha.